All right, here we are again, Sea Otter. Um, it might be a little bit of background noise because there's people milling about the uh, expo ear here, but uh, we're uh, going to try to move on and show you a little bit more of the detail of our tool lineup. Um, we have, as I said earlier, the linear bearing press, which is the BRT60 tool. It comes with all these guides, uh, a short press and a long press, as Kalen was using just now for the suspension pivot demo. Um, we're going to be doing some other types of bearing removal and replacement um, with our new BRT40 tool, which allows us to move, remove bearings from bottom brackets, all three sizes, 24, 29, and 30 mil. Um, and also remove bearings from hub sets um, that have axle stops. We can use the axle stop to actually just press the bearing right through the hub set and gently remove that bearing without doing any damage to it. The final um, tool that is just brand new at Sea Otter this year is our BRT41. This tool actually allows us to pull bearings out of hub sets and again, doing it as gently as possible because our bearings can be cleaned and replaced. We have stainless bearings, we have XD15 bearings, and many of them have two year and lifetime warranties. So uh, it, it's imperative. If you want to be smooth as possible, you can just pull the bearing out, clean it, put it back in. But we want to do it gently, and that's what these tools are all about. So let's start with just removing some bearings from a uh, typical wheel set. This is an Industry 9 Torch hub um, that uh, our friends at Industry 9 uh, loaned us so that we could go through the demonstration. Um, Industry 9 is a, one of the many companies that actually specs Enduro bearings standard in their hub sets. I am using a uh, one of our tools here, which is our BRT 222. It's our high-end blind hole puller uh, with a slide hammer. I'm just going to use this puller because it's really convenient way of removing the axle end caps. You just loosen the puller, slide it in there till it notches, and it's nice. You can just tighten it down with your fingers and then give it a little wiggle and it comes right out. Um, you know, many repair manuals where we'll show you, oh, take the axle, put it into a hub vise and pull up really hard on the wheel. Not really necessary when you've got a little tool like this. It just makes the process so much simpler. And so I'll pull out both of those end caps, set them aside for the time being. And uh, with the caps out there, it's easy just to Slide that free hub body right out of there. The pulse, make sure the pulse all stay in place with the springs. You don't want to lose any of those. So I like to leave them just face up so nothing will fall out. Um, so here we are, axle, axle bearing bearing. And let's try removing this bearing by just pressing this axle out through the other side. To do that, I'm going to start with our BRT 40 six bolt cup. You can see it's got little knobs there that fit into the six bolt interface precisely. So it keeps everything straight, lined up. So when we decide we're going to press that bearing through, we're gonna do that with the long shaft of that BRT 60 tool. I like to take a little either 6801 or 6901 guide. It centers everything perfectly there. Slide the tool through. I'm getting ready to push that bearing through. And in order to do that, I'm going to utilize this tool, which is part of the BRT40. This is the BRT40 Master Cup, because that's the cup that has the nut in it that will drive this whole system. So you can see that goes on there. That spins in. We can just clip it in place, make sure everything's lined up, 
Sometimes it's nice to use gravity as your friend on this because those little notches can get moved. You want to make sure that they're set right in the notches. All right. Pop, 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 pop. And you can feel it when it's done. It just gets free. Oh, look at that. There it is. The axle is free. I can just unscrew the whole system, pop the axle out, pop the bearing out. And you can see our friends at uh, i9 are specking enduro bearings. They also do XT15 bearings in some of these hub sets as an option, which is really nice. And so most certainly with those bearings, you would want to be able to take that out, pop the seals off, spray some degreaser, pop it in a parts cleaner, and just put some fresh grease in and you're good to go for the next year or so, honestly. Um, quite often I run XD15 bearings in my bikes and I won't even touch them for two or three years and they're still just fine. So um, we can just, uh, if we want to reinstall this one, it's pretty much a basic, basic bearing press operation. You have the outer guide that fits right onto that size bearing. This is a 6804 bearing, so that's a 6804 guide. Um, you want to make sure, in the case of this bearing, this has an LLU seal on one side and an LLB seal on the other. You want to make sure that LLU seal is facing out, which is the gray seal. The LLB seal is a little bit lighter um, contact seal, so it will uh, spin a little bit smoother. And the LLB seal sorry, LLU seal, will uh, provide a little bit better protection from the elements. It's got a, a slightly heavier contact. So our 6804 guide, sliding that through. And then we just want to have an, a guide on the other side to keep us straight and flat. This is our long over axle guide that will slide over the axle to give us enough room so that we can press that bearing back in place. Boom, boom. You can see it's going in on this side. And you want to just get it slightly snug. You don't want to over tighten these quite often we see that the tolerances are slightly off between the axle and the hub shell. You have to get those, that spacing perfectly or else you might get a little bit of movement or a little bit of tightness. You can just go back in. If it's, if it's a little bit rough, just give it a little bit of a, a tiny adjustment by going through the process of removing the bearing, but just barely starting it. And that will give you a nice smooth finish. This one feels great. So we could actually just uh, set that bit aside and go on to looking at the other way of removing a bearing from a little bit different situation. A lot of hubs, like we work with Tune, we work with White Industries. Those hubs, they just have a spacer between the bearings. So we need to find a way to pull the bearing out without doing damage to it and uh, without the aid of any internal stop to help push it out. So what we do is uh, we've designed this new tool that kind of mimics the action of a slide hammer. You can use the um, puller from our slide hammer set or you can just buy these individually. This is a 15 millimeter version that slides right into the ID of the bearing and just locks it in place. Normally I'd take this slide hammer and whack it out if I were going to throw that bearing away but I want to use this bearing again. I want to be able to reinstall it. I want to be able to clean it out, put fresh grease in it and just put it back in there because it's perfectly fine. It doesn't have any corrosion. I just want to get the grit out of it and clean it up. So to mimic that action of the slide hammer, but in a gentle way, we've come up with the BRT41 tool, which utilizes these two cups 
and the extractor from the BRT-222 and this adapter that allows us to utilize the rod from the BRT-60. This adapter has the same thread on the outside as the extractor tool and the same thread on the inside as the press rod. So utilizing that adapter, we can space this out, get everything snug, can just do it with your fingers. There's no movement there, that's snug by finger. I know I'm caught that first bearing in there. I put my spacer over here, that centers everything. And what I'm gonna do is utilize the two handles against one another and against this cup to press or rather pull the bearing out. I'm just gonna slide the tool into the adapter and again just finger tight if it stops it's done it's it's all set that's tight in the bearing this slides on top the zip nut can slide right down i hold it with my fingers and then just holding the upper handle i can just tighten the lower handle and the bearing falls out really simple really gentle it's the easiest way to gently mimic that action that happens so violently with a slide hammer but is so easy to do with just a little bit of engineering and a threaded rod that's the brt 41 and it's just three parts that are part of the whole system, really. What we've done is building these tools that provide different functionality for different purposes. Put that bearing back in using the standard bearing press with, that's a 6802 bearing, so I'll bet get our inner guides on either side, get everything lined up real nice. Slide that zip nut in place. Handle number two, tighten it all down. And again, it needs to just feel easy to do. You wanna make it snug, but not overly tight because what can happen sometimes? Again, if the tolerances aren't exactly right between the, bo the bearing bore and the spacer, sometimes it can be a little bit rough. If, that, if you feel that, these feel really nice and smooth. If you feel that, that's because there's just a little bit difference between those tolerances. Quite often, all you need to do is just go through the process again and just barely loosen the bearing and everything will spin super nice. So that's the BRT-60 putting the bearings back in place. We use the BRT-60. 41 to remove those bearings. That's with for bearings without axle stops. Then we used before that the BRT40 to remove the bearings with axle stops. That in what our case we had it on a six bolt hub, but again, you can do it for center lock or on the drive side if you use this, because we know how long those drive side axles are so we need to have that space the final part of the uh, equation is to be able to remove bottom bracket bearings as simply as possible as well you don't want to use a drift from the other side we just want to be able to pull them out efficiently we can take this bottom bracket and by utilizing this little expander pop that into the bearing and lock the ears in place on the bearing and again using the bearing press rod I can slide that through with a cup that will receive it on the other side this one is for 24 millimeter bearings because we're working with BB 86 here I slide that on top use that same master cup from the BRT 40 that I had before 
pin it in place, tighten the handles, and again, just with the action of my fingers, not much effort at all. If there's Loctite holding that bearing in place, like we had with Kalen, it might take a little bit more effort. You might want to double check if anything binds up, but that's it. The bearing just pops out. Reinstalling the bearing is just pretty much just as simple. This is an angular contact bearing, so we want to make sure that the green seal is facing out. Normally, we would want to put a little grease here in most cases, in, in some cases, if the bearing bore is a little bit loose, like in the case of the pivot uh, non-drive bearings, they just slide in. You might want to put a little bit of green retaining compound. But for us, we're just doing this demo so to show how it works. So I can take that 24 millimeter cup, flip it over. It's got a guide that fits just like our other bearing guides. Again, the cup sits right on top. I can take a 24 millimeter guide for the other side, slide the press rod through again, spin it all together, make sure it's all straight, and there it is pressing right back in. Again, you just feel it snug, you don't have to over tighten it and the bearing is replaced. You know, with many of our bearings, they come with um, two-year warranty, in this case of stainless steel bearings, or lifetime warranty for XD15. You can just pull this bearing out, pull the seals, clean it, put fresh grease in, put it back in. Finally, with this same uh, tool, we're able to utilize this same cup with any of the three sizes of common bottom bracket bearings. In the case of what we did here earlier was the 24 millimeter version. We've also got 29 and 30. The guides that go with this for reinstallation and we have the expanding pullers for 29, 30 millimeter and 24, 25 millimeter. We didn't do 25 today, this one's 24. 25 is what you usually find with some standard Shimano bottom brackets. So we just made it so it worked across the board. And they're all designed to work with our BRT60 linear press. The linear press normally comes with a set of the most common internal bearing guides for pressing bearings back in. And it also comes with a set of double-sided guides that allow you to push the bearings out and receive them in the cups. The BRT60 that works with the BRT41 and the BRT40. And you can buy them as individuals. You can buy the parts a la carte, or you can buy the whole set together. That completes the tool lineup for bearing removal and replacement. Thanks again to Kalen for coming out to, to help us with the suspension bearing removal and replacement. Pivot has been a great partner for us. And uh, we hope to see you out there and have a great time uh, riding your bike instead of having to work on it.